along with folks. So uh, the focus for the discussion, hopefully we can we can stay on the topic. We have a we have two uh, white boards here, so if there's there's questions that we want to have sort of as a parking lot and want to come back to, that's fine. But we wanted to focus in on these ideas around flexible flexible options. So the, the first one that if hopefully everyone has the draft code is on this clear and objective standards. You know, if, if someone doesn't want to come up with a specific, uh, you know, unique plan to uh, have some sort of impact in this proposed overlay zone, then there's these clear and objective standards that some folks like because it's exactly what can or can't be done in the in the area. And a lot of times that's what other jurisdictions have only provided, so we're trying to uh, have additional ones. And also there's this idea of, okay, if you have a, if you have a, a pretty pristine area or and you want to do some development, you can come up with a plan, uh, show it to, uh, share it with the planner, have it um, approved, have some long-term um, monitoring of it. Another option is, you know, if you have really high quality riparian area and you, you can show that you're going to continue to meet some level of desired condition, then that's uh, perfectly okay. And also, I, I think I left off the option D, but um, that, that's also um, in the draft code. Thanks. Oh, right. So it's the idea, and this has been applied um, elsewhere for different um, planning uh, rules, but there's this idea of variable buffer widths on uh, page nine. So if you, know, if you want to have an impact in some area of the buffer, if there's some additional uh, buffer left somewhere else that's of you know, pretty high quality, that's perfectly fine. So uh, you know, there's, there's quite a few options here um, to you know, meet you know, some landowner goal goals. The, the main one that we've seen or heard about was that you know, we want to just have a, you know, a picnic area or we want to just have you know, one small piece of this overlay zone. You know, we want to perhaps do something in that area, so why shouldn't we be able to do that? And um, that's what we're trying to get at here, here with these different options. Something else I wanted to go through that's more along the lines of the inventory and uh, tools that we have for this project and for other projects is this, um, what's called LIDAR or remote sensing, which is high resolution imagery of um, uh, Benton County where it's available and we're hoping to have uh, more available in the LC Basin, most of it's in the more urbanized areas of uh, Willamette Basin at this point. But what you can do is, you know, if you were, if you had an issue with, um, you know, de uh, delineating this uh, riparian corridor, you can utilize this remote sensing uh, information we have in the inventory if you, if you review it to determine exactly where the stream channels are. Uh, you can actually look through vegetation, determine where side channels, remnant side channels were. So it's it's definitely a, a helpful tool. But also we're we've acknowledged that. Obviously, you have to have someone go out there on the ground and, and check it if there's an issue that you know, someone says, you know, this is way off, then we have to go out there and do some more field checking. Um, just another idea of uh, keeping the, the resource in a pretty high quality condition. And again, this is uh, a good way to stay, stay in touch, ask more questions, and um, learn more about the project if, if you're interested. And I don't know if we got time for questions or if we want to move on to code. Or if you want to and what represents an improvement versus a maintenance and that sort of thing? Yeah, just, just quickly, the, the, the focus on water temperature is a good one, especially for the Willamette Basin. But um, as stated in um, statewide planning goals and our comprehensive plan, there's other reasons for protecting riparian well and resources. Um, <coughs> and benefits I was talking about. Now, uh, the temperature issue, yeah, you, and you uh, brought that up at other meetings, I think it's one where we can always have more data. <laughs> and we, we probably should have more data. 
Um, but as Benton County, you know, we're somewhat limited in getting baseline data on on those on those streams. So we're we're often utilizing what's well, then, readily available. Then how do you establish the natural conditions? <laughs> you know, if, if there are rules that have to be applied to restore to the natural condition, how do you define that natural condition? Well, we can get into that. I, I see Chris really wanted to weigh in here, so maybe I'll turn it over to Chris and then we can move on to a new question. Uh, we established natural conditions looking at, I'm with the Oregon DEQ, my name is Chris Bam, I'm a Willamette State Coordinator. Please go up to the microphone so all of us can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I wish this was warm. We established what is the system, what we call system potential vegetation in all the various sub-basins of the Willamette um, Basin. And we did that looking at um, a land surveys done in the 1850s uh, by the U.S. government where they recorded the type of vegetation that was present uh, when they were doing their land surveys. We also looked at the soils, the hydrology, the, uh, the topography, all these features factored into what uh, what a uh, riparian area could support based on that kind of data. And with that, uh, we modeled what the system potential vegetation looked like and what the type of shading it provided and basically the type of thermal load that a stream system experienced. And that's how we came to the shade targets which are in the TMDL. Okay. 